Hello, and first of all, thank you to Medicine X for inviting me from the South Bronx. Uh, we certainly need to get an immigration visa to come to California from the South Bronx. Uh, I stand before you in three roles. One is as a patient. I had my knee replaced last year, and uh, it was a very popular blog on Medscape called MyKneeYourKnee.com, and in three weeks I'm getting my left knee replaced uh, just because it, to balance myself. I'm also chairman of orthopedics at a very large safety net hospital in the South Bronx, Bronx, Lebanon, which sees 1.15 million clinic visits a year in what is the poorest congressional district in the nation. So I am the chairman of orthopedics there. And the third part, I am here in front of you as a citizen developer, uh, someone who has worked on developing uh, some programs and some things along the way using sort of a lot of do-it-yourself stuff. Uh, my first project was learning how to code HTML and I coded a website called Bone Home, which was in 1994 that got bought out by a fledgling company called Medscape. So I was one of the original 12 founders of Medscape and still am the editor of Medscape Orthopedics. So that was with a do-it-yourself kind of program. Today I'm going to show the project that has been 10 years in the making, the use of a low-code database to develop solutions and then spin off some ideas into actual apps. So what really happens is uh, the fact that 10 years ago I became the chairman of orthopedics and I was lost because we did not have an EHR, we did not have business intelligence, we didn't have good surgical scheduling, we didn't have test utilization analysis, we had no way to do referral management, equipment management, and protocol adherence. And one of the reasons was even though we're a 120 year old hospital, I was the first chairman of orthopedics in the history of that hospital. Orthopedics used to answer to general surgery, which was uh, not growing. So I had a challenge, and I spent $22, uh, reached into my pocket, and spent $22 to join what was um, called TrackVIA, which was a online Microsoft Access slash Excel slash low-code database environment. Wrote a business plan for the place, uh, but it included some lofty goals. Uh, when I got there, there were 3,500 clinic visits seen in orthopedics and 237 operations now, and about 1.5 million in gross revenue. Now we see 40,000 clinic visits, 2,000 operations, and for the hospital, which is a not-for-profit voluntary hospital orthopedic service line, generated $52 million. And I really chalk it up to the databases and the solutions we put together. We are what I call a demand-side hospital. I consider places like Stanford Hospital for Special Surgery, Massachusetts General Hospital, supply-side hospital. They supply a whole bunch of famous people, and then if you get a chance, you have access to go to those people. If not, you go to a junior person. We're a demand-side hospital. We have 430,000 unique patients that have to get health care that represent the 1.15 million clinic visits, so we have to match the demand. So I don't have a choice in having to service this community, so we had to figure out a way of, to get efficiency, quality up, efficiency up, and also stay in business. Not-for-profit doesn't mean you don't have to make a profit. Not-for-profit means that you have to pay Con Ed like everybody else, because I'm not on the government budget, I'm not on a city budget, so we have to stay in business. So EHR systems exist to try to help you out with this. You could always track data with Excel and similar types of programs. But the problems with an EHR is the fields are generally limited to clinical data. They don't give you much business intelligence. Custom reporting is mind-boggling different difficult. Um, we didn't have an EHR when I first got there in 2007. Then we got all scripts, so my joke is we still don't have an EHR. Um, and if we bought Epic, we still wouldn't have an EHR, so it really doesn't matter. EHRs are just note repositories. They are not giving you care planning. Changes in them are bureaucratic. There's very little control. And the time from idea to implementation using an Allscripts or an Epic or a Cerna is mind-boggling long. Okay? Uh, we're still at two years trying to figure out a surgical solution that I figured out what you'll see here. 
Uh, problems with Excel, there's no real problems with Excel, but it's not a relational database. It's limitations, you can't spin off app development off of it. It's only a spreadsheet, doesn't handle forms well. I needed a way where surgeons and nurses and other people could go onto a website and fill out forms that go into our database. And Excel doesn't allow you to do that. And simultaneous multiple users, unless you're in Google space, uh, which is not easy for us to be, um, it's not a good HIPAA space, is not easy. So in came TrackVia, which is a company that I found out recently that I was the eighth customer. Um, I thought that was really good. Uh, I had my surgery done in Seattle. I went to the Bronx and I had my best friend in Seattle do my surgery because you know you can't find a good surgeon in New York City. We all know that. So with that, I uh, got a Seahawks jersey that said number eight, which was the colors of Track V. I walked into Track V offices with that jersey. I felt that was an early adopter to this low-code database. They now do all the database for Major League Baseball, memorabilia, and a variety of other big companies. I like consider myself their, their biggest client, which I am certainly not at my initial investment of $22. Um, Track Via allows me to uh, import data from the EMR, from hospital collections, OR costs, use outcomes data, develop external entry through forms. It is essentially Microsoft Access in the cloud on Turbo, all right? And initially it costs around $49.95 a month and then $5 per user. They now have a little more aggressive pricing, but I am not a Track Via owner, I am, not, I am just a customer. So I'm not even selling it, but I am selling the idea that you should do a lot of do-it-yourself stuff. Major apps that we pulled off just using a low-code database, we called them SurgyTrack, Referral Pad MD, Incident Reporter, Swift Path Outcomes, Rounds Tracker, and OR Product Requester. And that's only a few of the do-it-yourself apps that we pulled off that a day doesn't go by with someone doesn't try to sell me a $100,000 program that does one of these things. All right, and I'll show you some examples of that. Um, first pro project we did was a thing called Surgery Track. We had a problem. We, we understand that bringing someone to surgery is process management. There's upstream finding the patient, midstream preparing the patient, and downstream getting them to surgery. That's process management. Nothing handles process management better than a relational database. There are some commercial programs out there now, but back then there was none that managed that process management. So we initiate the surgical event by the surgeon. We manage all subsequent events using a cloud-based database. So when the surgeon generates his form, it goes right to a surgical booker immediately. Everyone sees it simultaneously. Surgeons get updates on where their patients are in the process of the surgical preparation. So where are they in medical clearance? Where are they in this? Does the surgical bookers can't hide and say, uh, how come you're not do, how come this patient is not going to OR because they're in surgical medical clearance? Well, they can see that. It's all transparent. We connect surgery track to charge capture, to billing, so the surgeons can do all the charge capture and billing, and we analyze the data for business intelligence. So I have dashboards that simultaneously tell me how much time people are spending in the OR, how much money they're making per minute for the hospital, how many cases they have pending, how many cases they booked last week. All this with a do-it-yourself online Microsoft Access database. This is a sample screen shot of uh, a track via platform. Simple, standard, relational database. I pull the field over. Um, there are a lot of dashboards you can use, a lot of filters, uh, a lot of views you could make. My surgeons see this. Uh, okay, they generate a new record. Uh, they actually don't generate a new record. Actually, it comes off of the EMR. And, it, and we're working on a way to scrape the EMR directly into TrackVia, but instead we're faxing it and outsourcing it to a company in India called Tasks Every Day, where they enter it for $6.95 an hour. So we sort of did a little outsourcing trick so that even the surgeons don't even have to enter this anymore. You know, because asking a surgeon to write something is, is, is a hardship in medicine, believe me. Um, okay, I could say that as a surgeon. What ends up happening is I, have a, I end up getting a series of monstrous surgical analytics uh, pending this week, pending the next 30 days, what's not booked, what's not coded, um, what is uh, 
um, calcul uh, calculated money for the year, total cases in the year, total case last year, all surgeons, Part A collections as the hospital. Simultaneously as the hospital gets money in, it goes onto my track via. So I'm getting business intelligence on case mix index and everything, all from a do-it-yourself program. Rounds Tracker was pretty cool. We, we knew, we, this was our first program because we didn't know where to find patients in the hospital. Okay, our PAs would enter them, but in the EHR, if, you don't, if you're a covering doctor and they don't put you in as a care provider, and you don't know where people are. So our PAs, who are our first responders and our fellows, they enter into a classic uh, database, which actually goes to our phone, so we know where every patient is in the hospital at all times. And we also track consults. We're producing two papers out of this database. One of them, we have actually looked at what is the downstream effect of 13,000 consecutive orthopedic consults in an urban setting? We're producing that article right now. So 13,000 consecutive, 13, consecutive orthopedic consults were given to us, and we're telling people what happened to those. And we're able to do that with rounds tracker and consult tracker. So we're, trying to, we're adding to the literature of the world by finding our patients appropriately. Referral pad was a great product. We had a very busy clinic, six to eight week wait time. Our valued referral doctors had problems getting in good cases. So we needed a system that gave our valued referral doctors access to reserved appointments and track those appointments to get patients in in a timely manner. Sort of a Zoc doc, but doctor to doctor concierge. We had clinics that needed to get patients in. So we literally wrote this in track via where they were able to see the actual reserved appointments for them. So this eventually became a commercial product, which we launched this year called Referral Pad, Referral Pad MD, which I think I, if you could start the video back there. Nope. Just move a mouse over it. I just messed with it. Sorry. There it is. There it is. So what our referral doctors do, they click, they select a provider, we give them a, a calendar for reserve spots. Uh, let's say uh, 11 a.m., hits continue. They enter in a little bit of basic information. So these are not in the EHR template. These are reserve spots for doctors we know who do what we want, which is send us surgery. I'm not saying that surgery is always the answer, but we're surgeons and we're, we're looking for surgery. All right, you put in the plan information, some number, group number, who the referral doctor is, and they're done. We give them a password, confirm the appointment, and it even gives directions to our office from our referral doctor. So we wrote this program called Referral Pad, and we get on average 30 new referrals a month. The conversion to surgery is about 80%. So this is a staggering app that we built. Um, the next one we did was I was approached by the chairman of internal medicine that we needed incident reporting, near misses. And he got a quote for $160,000 from an off-the-shelf program. All right, we wrote this, I wrote this in a Sunday evening using TrackVIA, Woohoo Forms, and a program called OrthPro. Woohoo Forms allows you to make HTML forms for $49 a month, and OrthPro allows you to get uh, third-party authorization logins for $5 a month, all right? So I'm way past my budget of $22 a month uh, from the original track via, but I figured as an orthopedic surgeon I could splurge, okay? So we built a simple website on GoDaddy, incident reporting, got that from um, Fotolia Images, that image cost me about $3. This is the code on Woohoo. I did not write that code. I remember I'm a citizen developer, I'm not a developer. Woohoo Forms develops that and TrackVIA supports it. So that form, which is sitting on a website, is a dead form that then gets sent into a TrackVIA database. So residents could use their smartphones, because TrackVIA has an app now, and if they see a near miss or an incident on the floor, which is now a joint commission reporting requirement, they could go on to surgicalcloud.com, 
click on incident report, fill out this little form. It goes right into Track Via and it goes to a dashboard of the chairman of medicine. Simple incident reporting system didn't cost us incrementally much more than, than $49 a month. And I actually canceled my subscription to WooFoo Forms because I don't need forms anymore from them. But when I want it again, I'll pay again, all right? I'm not their greatest customer, all right? So it goes right into a track via dashboard. The steps to success as a citizen developer, you have the track via, you find out about how to develop web forms, you find out how do you do logins. All this stuff is available with Google searching, and then you have a dashboard on track via. We also had a problem in the operating room. Surgeons like to request equipment all the time. And the way they request it is they walk out of the room after a case and they say, I want the widget and just go get it for me, and they walk out. And then they send a generally nasty email. Me, I have been the source of some of those emails. That's how I know they're generally nasty. Or a specifically nasty email. How come no one got this for me yet? I told Susan in the operating room two months ago when I walked out of, it, it makes no sense. It's, 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 a, it's a lunacy procurement system, okay? So we essentially did what we did with the incident reporting. Welcome to the Bronx Lebanon Operating Room Surgical page. Surgeons now know they go to surgicalcloud.com. There's actually a website um, that we own um, from GoDaddy. It has one button that says login. It's, it's not much of a business, okay? You log in, depending upon your login, the surgeons go to this page, they request products. It goes to a track via a dashboard, which is shared with the OR committee, with the products committee, whose one goal is to say no to products. But now that things are tracked, people know where it stands in the procurement. If they say yes, it goes to the next level, to the CFO. That's the person who usually says no to everything. And then after the CFO, it goes to purchasing. So we, once again, added another do-it-yourself application using an off-the-shelf low-code database. The next one, we started managing episodes of care. This is the biggest project we did. TrackVia still runs this. This is a company that we spun off called SwiftPath. SwiftPath is one of the top 10 in patient engagement programs for joint replacement uh, in the country, it manages episodes of care, bundled payments, and outpatient joint replacement surgery. We wrote the entire back end with TrackVia, okay? So that, again, costs us the same amount to run this. Most people who are doing this are doing native programming to run episodes of care. So we're sending out alerts to patients, alerts by text. We're doing a whole lot of episode of care management in joint replacement. I was not only uh, a part owner of SwiftPath, but I'm also a customer because I had my joint replacement done in a SwiftPath program. And it's very powerful to manage episodes of care using databases. So this was our second spinoff of a company using a do-it-yourself database. So I'd like to say, and this is my last two slides, you know, to be anyone in the entrepreneur world, and I'm not big in it, this is Silicon Valley where people are very big, but I've been fortunate to get involved in a couple of small projects. You need the idea, and there's no shortage of ideas. You need the ability to make it, and you need to distribute it. All right, that's it. What the low-code databases do, especially if you have data tracking needs, or I have an idea to manage data, it gives you that ability to make it. Okay, because every time I want to do it custom, every time I want to do it custom, I show them what I did in TrackVIA, and then a real programmer who's programming in Perl or Ruby or some one of these other names that sound, I mentioned those to let you know that I could talk to developers. Um, when I say things like that, they say, hey, you want to have a beer? Yeah. So, you know, the reality is you need a way to communicate and if you can do it yourself, build that prototype in something like this, the power of innovation is now in your hands because it goes from your mind to your computer instantly and you're building prototypes. It's, it's actually amazing. And what makes it easy is everyone thinks you're a goddamn genius, but really in the country of the blind, the one-eyed uh, one man is king. 
this is just a little, little bit of an advantage for you in, to open up your eyes and make some real change in healthcare. So I want to thank you very much for your time. Thank you.